today we're going to uh, basically look back at this expression uh, and look at the scaling behavior of polymers in different solvents. So good solvents, bad solvents, uh, and theta solvents. So we're going to finish up this flow for energy derivation and see how our scaling changes, uh, our, our scaling changes depending on our, uh, basically the parameters that we're working with. Um, we were in a good solvent, bad solvent, or a theta solvent. So let's look at first a good solvent. So we know when we're in a good solvent, uh, and this is just the rearranging of that flow of free energy, um, setting that derivative equal to zero. When we're in a good solvent, we know that our excluded volume is extremely large, again, because our chain wants to be kind of fully extended and far apart from one another. Those monomer units don't want to touch, and our alpha is much, much greater than zero. So with those two uh, parameters in mind, we know that uh, basically if our alpha is much, 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 much greater than zero. Uh, this term here with this alpha to the minus three is going to kind of disappear, be effectively zero. And this alpha to the fifth term is going to dominate versus this alpha term right here. So what you're left with approximately is this relationship here. So alpha to the fifth and then this excluded volume and the one half over L cubed. So that alpha uh, is equal to uh, our alpha squared is equal to r squared over r naught squared, where that is the length of our ideal chain, so it's just n l squared. So we know that alpha to the fifth is going to be uh, r to the fifth divided by n to the five over two times l to the fifth as well. So once we plug that in, do some rearranging uh, over here. Actually, let me excuse me. Clean this up just a little bit. Plugging this in, doing some rearranging. Again, we don't care too much uh, about our kind of parameter here. Uh, we just care, we, do, we really care with, about the n scaling. So if I plug in that for alpha, my r to the fifth is going to be proportional to that n to the half times n to the five halves. So that's going to be n to the three. So my r squared the one half is going to scale proportionally to n to the three halves. This is our essential finding. This is our quantitative proof that, uh, again, several weeks. Because why? We know for an ideal chain model, this r squared scaling as a function of n is n to the one half. So we've just tr proven for a good solvent, we're going to increase that scaling to the three halves. So that is our critical, critical, critical finding uh, that we have for our good solvent scaling. So it will swell. That polymer will expand. And we've kind of now proven that exhaustively and quantitatively as well. Um, also, it's uh, pretty cool that um, even if you run computer simulations that uh, basically do self-avoiding random walks, um, you can basically almost obtain this scaling exactly. So the real scaling, uh, uh, basically the real scaling uh, exponent for self-avoiding random walks is 0.588. So forward was very, 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 very close uh, just from a pure, again, First principles, uh, nice kind of you know theoretical derivation on how this polymer should behave in a good solvent. So we can do the same thing now for a poor solvent. So for a poor solvent, we know that V is less than zero and our alpha is much, much less than one. So when we go back over here, let's kind of erase this one. Excuse me. Over here now, when we look back at this term, if alpha is much, much less than one, well, then we know, let me get in my tron. If alpha is less than uh, is much much less, less than one, we know that this term is going to be large. We know this term is also large because it doesn't depend on uh, uh, n negative uh, as well. So this term is going to be negative and large because we just have our n value here. But our our alpha value is uh, small, very very very. If it's less than one, very small. This term is going to be extremely small, and this term relative to these other two terms is going to be small as well. So. We know that this term is negative. We are going to flip it around uh, and we'll get obtain this expression as well. So rearranging in terms of alpha. And again, we know that alpha is equal to R over N one half uh, L. So alpha cubed is just going to be R cubed divided by N to the three halves L cubed. So rearranging that expression here, I am going to obtain that R cubed instead of in terms of alpha is equal to W over L to the six, L cubed. Again, it doesn't really matter. These are their kind of terms. Uh, new N to the one half, multiply N to the three halves. So, excuse me, one half, 
and I'm going to bring my L cubed here. So these guys, again, doesn't matter about the L's. Again, they come, uh, they come in from a, basically an, <laughs> another factor. But what we're going to obtain here is the following. Uh, we see here that our N, 1 half divided by uh, 3 halves, so that is just going to be our R cubed scales with N. So our root mean squared into N distance is going to scale with N as basically 1 third. And again, this should make sense, right? Quantitatively, we've proven our qualitative understanding. In a poor solvent, I am going to scale as uh, n to the one-third. So again, in an ideal solvent or ideal chain, we saw this scaling. Proportional to n to the one-half. In a good solvent, so this is a theta for melt. So for a good solvent, so for alpha greater than one, for our new greater than... Uh, basically larger than, you know, zero, positive, exactly, you know, <laughs> yeah, very, very large, very, very good uh, solvent. We know that our scaling will be n to the three halves. And finally, for bad solvent, where the polymer is going to collapse on itself, for alpha less than one, for B less than, uh, basically less than zero, our R squared is going to vary as n to the one third. Smaller. So our polymers collapse. So we've proven this quanti quantitatively once again. Now, in a theta solvent, just to kind of finish up this discussion, we know that our excluded volume is zero, our three body parameter is zero. So let's go back to this expression right here. So let me erase. So if my V is zero, back. my V is zero, this term uh, cancels out. Oops, let me draw. My V is zero. My uh, w zero, the three body term, and then I know that my alpha is just going to be equal to one. That'll solve alpha to the fifth equals alpha. One will solve that expression. <laughs> so uh, that's it. So we obtain and we find. So if we know that alpha is equal to uh, one, we know that we know that our again we know that alpha is equal to r over n to the one half L. So that is going to be our scaling. So our R squared to the one half is proportional to half L. So we obtain all of our scaling. Everything makes sense. We've quantitatively proven this uh, in the world. And then now we have kind of this really, really nice uh, kind of summary of this lecture. So this is a critical kind of scaling um, behavior that we have uh, here uh, for our good solvent, theta solvent, poor solvent. Uh, and you can kind of see the power again. This scaling with n matters because there's orders of, if you have an oligomer that's made of n of 100 polymers or 100 monomer units versus a uh, high molecular weight polymer chain of 100,000 K, uh, you're talking about four or five orders of magnitude difference. So the size of that polymer can be dramatically different. If the size of that polymer is different, uh, obviously intermolecular interactions are different, the number of those, but also, um, again, the mechanical properties, everything, you know, these kind of changes, these order of magnitude changes in some parameter can lead to changes in uh, basically the properties of your material. So that's it for lecture four, uh, three. Next time we're going to get into lecture four, Flory Huggins theory, mixing of polymer blends, um, and a lot of good kind of phase diagram discussion. So uh, be ready for that and uh, let me know if you have any questions. I'll see you all next time. Thanks. Have a good one. Bye.